Hi guys, after a break of a week, let's get back to our webinars now. Um, though to be honest, I'm still feeling a little tired and reeling from all the travel, but then, you know, June is upon us now. So we cannot afford to lose steam. Um, let's gather all our energy and move in the next three, four months are going to be a roller coaster, of course, right? Um, we'll go back to our FAQs of GMAT. We um, have discussed those in two weeks. And then today, again, these are the questions which were raised by learners. They wanted to know the strategy for these particular points. So we'll discuss them today. Uh, we have something uh, for everyone. We have something for those who are, um, you know, on the last leg of their prep for those who are in the middle and those who are kind of starting out just now right so stay tuned uh, i'll share my screen now and uh, we'll discuss the various points that we have for today yeah. uh, now our one question uh, you know asked by all the learners is how to create a personal pacing plan yeah, uh, you know, pacing plan essentially that when you are taking the test, now this is more relevant for people who are about to take their test soon enough, that when you're taking the test, then how do you pace yourself? How do you keep track of how many questions you should have done by what time? And in case you're falling short on time, then what do you do, right? So we'll discuss, look, um, there again, the pacing plan is going to be individualized. It will depend on the individual situation. So that is why I'm going to discuss you know, how it will change in, in two circumstances. Look, one circumstances, um, you know, a person who is very comfortable with the timing, like for example, in case you do use visual methods, you do use holistic methods, etc. you're going to be very comfortable with time. Yeah? Um, you know, maybe there might be a little bit of pressure during DI. And I, I give you that, that's fine. But then with the other two, you you know, once you understand your CR really well, once you understand exactly what you're required to do, it doesn't take much time either. Of course, RC reading the passage takes whatever time it takes, but then overall, you do have enough time in both the sections. In DI, you'll probably be cut to cut almost, you know, even if you're really good at it. Um, so for, for people who are quite comfortable with the timing, and you, you would know whether you're comfortable or not, right? You're going to take full length, uh, mock tests, you'll do a lot of practice. Um, so then you'll know whether you're falling short and whatever happens in the mock test, you can expect very similar things to happen in the actual test as well. Yeah, Very similar, not same, but very similar. So in case you find out in your mocks that you are very comfortable with the timing, then I suggest that you should not worry about the clock too much. Yeah, uh, You know, if you end up putting if, anyway, if you're comfortable with timing, that means that there are plenty of questions where you're putting in just one minute to solve the question, right? Which means that you can afford to put, let's say, three or four minutes on a on one of the questions, even if you are a little stuck. And, you know, once you've put in three or four minutes on a question, you will, or obviously, you'll know that you've spent a lot of time on it. And if it's not working out, then what we're going to do is we're going to mark it, book, um, you know, for, we'll, we'll mark whatever answer we wish to, we'll bookmark it and we'll move ahead, right? So then um, you should check for your timing whether you are on track or not after 10 questions you don't have to look at the clock in between i think uh, it's only distracting if you keep looking at the clock again and again right? and it only gives you more and more anxiety and then you you looking at it again and again you're calculating it just doesn't work and just doesn't help us at all if you're comfortable with timings in your mocks etc you should check only after 10 questions so essentially you are checking just a you know, the clock just a couple of times during the test. After 10 questions, take a look. Okay, you know, sounds right. I have done about half the test and about half the time is remaining. Very good. Go ahead, right? Um, in case, but then, you know, this is not something which happens with most of us. A lot of us, we feel very rushed during the test, right? We don't have enough time during the test. Uh, if you feel rushed during the test, if you feel that normally, in last two, three questions are just a haze and you somehow manage to you know, mark them, et cetera. Then you should check every, after every five questions, I would suggest that you should check the time. Yeah. So um, now th there's going to be strategy for all three sections. So we'll discuss, you know, what that is specific strategy for the rushed part of it in case you feel that you're rushed. So in data insights, for example, uh, you know, 
if your MSR, and you will get one MSR, right? You Typically, you will get three questions of MSR based on one set. And that is the question type which could take more than two minutes per question. Um, an MSR set may not get done in six minutes if it has three questions. It might take, it's a seven or eight minutes, it's possible. Uh, you know, there, there are those tabs and you have to switch between them and to understand what data is in each, it does take some time, even though you're not focusing on the exact data, but still uh, connecting the three tabs, the data of the three tabs, it does take some time. So, um, so, you know, this is what I would like to do that if your MSR is not done till now, then you should have taken two minutes per question till now. Yeah. Um, of course, you know, there are 20 questions, there are, there are 45 minutes. So there is, there is extra time in DI. You have more than two minutes per question, but then that extra time will most likely be required for MSR. So you should aim to do all the other questions in about two minutes per question. I would also like to have, let's say, about two minutes at the end. For example, if there is some question that I had issues with, I, you know, if I have enough time to review, that would be great. So essentially, I have to target that if my MSR is not done till now, then I should have taken two minutes for every question that I have done till now. So for example, in case I'm at my 10th question, my MSR is not done. When I look at the time at this time, then I should have typically, you know, used up my 20 minutes and my 25 minutes should be remaining at this time. Yeah. But then, uh, you know, my so these would be my checkpoints, essentially. So then after five questions, I should have 35 minutes remaining. After 10 questions, I should have 25 minutes remaining. After 15 questions, I should have 15 minutes remaining, assuming that my MSR is not done till now. So I should have taken two minutes per question for each DI question till then, yeah? If my MSR is done, then I should have two minutes remaining for each remaining question, yeah? So if my MSR is done and I'm at the 15th question, I know that five questions are left, I should have 10 minutes on the clock, yeah? Um, do ensure we have discussed this before that the penalty for a wrong for a simple for an easy question um, you know for an incorrect easy question is extremely high right so we have to ensure that we give every question a fair shot yeah i you know it's it's not okay if i have just 30 seconds for a question what if it is an easy question 30 seconds may not be enough for me to answer it right so i have to ensure that i have 2 minutes for every remaining question uh, for in any section i should typically have about two minutes for every question yeah so if my msr is done then um, you know again my entire my checkpoint will just move by five minutes so essentially then i have used my extra time in msr hopefully if i have two or three minutes still extra that's great but what is a must is to have two minutes for every remaining question then. So other than MSR, my every question of DI should not take more than two minutes, yeah? So what do I do? So for example, uh, you know, I realize that, okay, I'm short on time. I realize I do not have as much time as I would have liked to have based on the number of questions that are remaining. Then what do I do at that time then? So that is the time when I guess, yeah, I, I should then on, one question knowingly. So for example, if I'm talking about DI, then I should perhaps guess on a TPA question. Let's say if I see a TPA question, it seems to be rather hard and with a lot of data in it. Look, it will most likely not be easy. Yeah? Your TPA will, um, graphical interpretation can be easy. Table analysis can be easy. Your MSR will most likely not be easy because there's just so much data to handle, right? Um, so most MSR questions will be medium level, but then it doesn't matter. Anyway, we have to do the MSR it's a set of three questions, right? We cannot ignore. Uh, but TPA is one question which is independent, which has a lot of data, and it is most likely not going to be uh, considered easy by the algorithm, which means that even if I get it wrong, I will probably not get that big a penalty. And uh, a TPA question will typically take more time. So, um, you know, that is one question which on which I would then guess. 
put something that seems difficult, I would guess and then I would move on to ensure that I have, and of course I have to bookmark, right? I guess and I bookmark it and then I move on to my other questions. If I have time at the end, well and good. Do remember again, let me, I know I've, I've been saying it in all these webinars, you must see the review and edit screen um, in every section. Only then will your last uh, answer be recorded if you do look at the review and edit screen once, yeah? So please ensure that you move on to your review and edit and then using your bookmark, you go back to the previous question in case you have time, right? So this is how you're going to handle the pacing of the DI section. So in case you know, you're short on time, then you guess on TPA. Next comes what? So our checkpoints are going to be exactly the way we discussed over here. Again, um, you know, we should have used, let's say, two minutes per question. So after five questions, uh, I should have about 35 minutes because after, you know, in five questions, I would have, you should have typically used about 10 minutes. So I should have about 35 questions, 35 minutes remaining. Even if it is, let's say, about 34, you know, 34, 33, it still doesn't matter. You don't have to worry too much. Only in case the different the difference is quite a lot, then you do need to guess. Yeah. Again, follow the same pattern. After five questions, 35 minutes should be remaining. After 10 questions, 25 minutes should be remaining. After 15 questions, 15 minutes should be remaining. And after 20 questions, five minutes should be remaining. So you'll have one more question. Perhaps you're going to take a minute or two for that. Then you'll have two, three minutes remaining. And then you can go back to your uh, bookmarked questions and then check them out, right? You'll have time to review and edit in that particular case, right? If, um, keep in mind, in case you feel that you're, um, you know, falling short on time, you don't have enough time, then here also you should um, take a guess, right? Bookmark it. If you want, you can perhaps even write down somewhere, you know, because you might have bookmarked other questions also, and this one would pretty much be a guess. So in case you do get some time, this might be the first question that you want to come to to review it because you've not essentially even solved it once. So then uh, if you want you to bookmark it, you can also, you know, scribble somewhere on your scratch pad that this is the question number that you want to come back to on which you guessed. Right. And then you guess and you move on. Right. Ensure, please ensure you, you give a fair shot to every question in GMAT focus. I cannot you know, tell you how important that is. Right. OK. And uh, verbal again, verbal will be um, again, same as quant. Um, you know, you will have very similar timelines but you will need to adjust for RC. So uh, for example, you know, checking every after every five questions may not, for example, if you're doing an RC set and you're on question number four and you have three or four questions in that, it is best for you to finish the RC set and then check whether, uh, you know, you're on time or not because checking in the middle doesn't really help at all, right? Initially, there is a, some sunk time in an RC. Initially, you've spent about two, three minutes and you're going to make it up in the next question or two. So no point in, I mean, creating anxiety for yourself. Ensure that you finish that RC set and then check how much time is left. Essentially, again, you should have about two minutes per remaining question. Yeah, aim to have about two minutes per remaining question. What do you do on verbal in case you find out that you're short on time? Uh, do not um, ignore RC, do not um, guess on RC. Uh, you have any way invested time in reading the RC and understanding the RC, right? So then you must read the question and the option properly and answer to the best of your ability to every RC question if you must guess then guess on a CR question, on a CR question that you are uncomfortable with, or you know, which seems to have a longer question stem, et cetera, then guess on a CR question, you know, save your time and move forward. Again, uh, please do remember that if you are thinking of guessing on a CR question, you must guess within the first 10, 15 seconds, right? Don't, you know, don't stick to it for a minute. Don't, uh, you know, be in that limbo and that you're making a decision whether I should try it, whether I should guess and move on. You can't, you don't have time for that because then you're not essentially saving any time. So don't, you know, within the first 10 seconds, then you decide that, okay, I'm short on time. Let me see if I, if I get an RC, CR question, which, you know, I'm not comfortable with, I'll just move on. So a CR question, you say, let's say long question stem, you just, Take a look at it, 10 seconds, guess and move on. 
right? So actually save time. Don't end up wasting time and still guessing is what I would like to tell you. Right? Make sense? Okay, so this is how you should create a personal pacing plan for yourself. Yeah. Um, you know what is best for you, you'll realize once you start taking the mocks. But then you know, this is basically the reference for you. Yeah. Okay, let me just take a